Storage is an incredibly important part of the performance of any system, whether it be production or in the home lab. I'm going to take you guys with me as I install Intel Optane Storage in the home lab environment. In fact, I'm going to introduce Intel Optane Drives as a cache tier for my VMware vSAN distributed storage in the home lab. What effect will it have on performance? We're going to nerd out with some benchmarking of both before and after. So stick around. I want to thank Intel along with the VMware vExpert program for providing complimentary Intel Optane drives to a select number of VMware vExperts. I am humbled and honored to have been chosen for the ability to test out Intel Optane in my home lab. This is going to be a fun journey as I install the new Intel Optane drives in my lab environment. And we're also going to run some benchmarks using an HCI benchmark utility known as HCI Bench, which is a VMware Fling utility. So we're going to see what difference Intel Optane storage makes in the home lab. Let's tackle the elephant in the room. You guys may be saying, wait a minute, isn't Intel Optane storage end of life? Intel has announced that they are no longer making Intel Optane storage. Well, that is partly true. Intel Optane will be produced by Intel until the end of 2025. At that point, it will no longer be produced. However, if you buy an Intel Optane drive the very last day of 2025, Intel is still offering a five-year support window on that Intel Optane drive. So the Intel Optane drives are still a very viable product. And with the notice of the end of life coming at the end of 2025, you can also find Intel Optane drives for very, very cheap from many online resellers. Now is a great time to stock up on Intel Optane and throw a bunch of it in the home lab. And that's what we're going to do. V experts were invited to a webinar with Simon Todd, a technical solution specialist with Intel. And Simon detailed very nicely the differences between Intel Optane storage and traditional NAND storage found in SSDs that we all know. Intel Optane has a couple of major advantages over traditional NAND storage. For one thing, traditional NAND storage uses transistors. Intel Optane storage uses no transistors internally. This is a major advantage when it comes to endurance of the storage solution. However, arguably the most important advantage of Intel Optane is how it deals with data stored on the Optane device. With NAND storage, it uses something called data pages. When these data pages are written, Anytime data is changed, the original data is moved to make the change. As you can see, that would not be extremely efficient. Also, when those data pages grow stale on traditional NAND devices, they have backend processes that have to clear out those stale pages. And this is a tremendous hit on performance when those processes kick in. Intel Optane has no such process due to the way it stores data. When it writes data and makes a change to that data, the data is simply updated in place. So there's no moving of data and then clearing out of data pages. And as you can imagine, this would have tremendous advantages, both in terms of endurance as well as the performance of the Intel Optane drives. The traditional P4800X Intel Optane storage solution comes in two form factors. You have the PCI Express card that you can simply drop into a free PCI Express slot. And there's also the U.2 form factor that allows you to connect what looks to be a traditional SSD form factor inside your server in the home lab or production use. This is the form factor that I will be using in my home lab. So the way that I am going to hook in the Intel Optane storage is using a special cable that allows you to uh, essentially use the NVMe slot on your motherboard and hook the other end to a U.2 connector, if my focus is working here. So NVMe, 
adapter to U.2. And there are several variations of this cable on Amazon. And I literally just picked this up. I think it was like $26 for this cable that allows you to adapt the NVMe uh, M.2 slot to the U.2 form factor uh, connector for those U.2 uh, Intel Optane drives. This will allow me to replace my existing cached here Samsung Evo NVMe drive with the Intel Optane. I'm replacing traditional NVMe storage for the cached here with Intel Optane storage. And I'm really excited to see what the performance benefits will be so as you guys can see, I've installed the M.2 adapter cable that will run to the U.2 Intel Optane hard drive, which I have mounted here. And pay no attention to the cabling as of now. Just going to get these installed and run some benchmarking without worrying too much about cable management. So I just have this mounted in one of the hard drive slots on the side of the Supermicro inside the housing of the server. So the cable just literally runs down. It plugs into a normal SSD power cable and runs down to the NVMe slot, the M.2 adapter. This is how the U.2 Intel Optane will be connected to the motherboard. And I'm going to be using a tool uh, released as a VMware fling called HCI Bench. VMware flings are unofficial and unsupported projects and solutions from VMware engineers and software architects. One of those solutions is HCI Bench. And HCI Bench is a hyper-converged infrastructure benchmark utility that is easy to deploy and it is provided as an OVA appliance. So what you do is you download this OVA appliance, you deploy it in your vSphere environment, and then you're able to browse out to the web interface to configure the benchmark runs as you will see just shortly. So it's super cool, super easy, and it is the de facto way to benchmark your VMware vSAN environment. Like any OVA appliance deployment, you deploy the appliance using the vSphere client, customize the network settings as well as the password for the appliance, and then confirm your changes. Let's quickly look at the HCI Bench admin interface where you configure the benchmark parameters. It's fairly straightforward. You simply point the HCI Bench utility to your vSphere environment with all of the expected parameters, how to log in, which networks you're using, cluster name, resource pools. You want to tell HCI Bench how you want to handle IP addressing information because what it will do is actually spin up guest virtual machines in your VMware vSAN data store and that's how it actually tests the performance of your data store. So you have some options configuring the IP address information. One of the things that makes this really super easy is the quote unquote easy run. When you toggle the easy run, HCI Bench Utility will automatically detect the configuration of your VMware vSAN data store. Uh, 4K 70% read, 100% random, which is most likely the most common pattern of I.O. that you're going to see in this easy run configuration. Then you can choose 100% read, 100% random, 50% read, 100% random. And then if you want to do 100% write, 100% sequential. I ran the 4K 70% read, 100% random. Note how you can choose the benchmarking tool as well. You've got two choices here. Uh, you can choose FIO or you can choose VD Bench. VD Bench is a plugin that you can download from Oracle. Now, you do need to sign up for a free Oracle account. Once you download the plugin, it's just a simple zip file and you upload that via this GUI interface to the HCI Bench utility. Once that is configured, you save your configuration, you can validate your configuration, you can start your tests, review results, save results, and then also control if you want to delete the guest VMs created by HCI Bench. So I'm going to share with you guys the results of the tests. The first performance chart that you're seeing is generated by HCI Bench as the report that it produces at the end of the benchmark. So I have 
three fairly aged Supermicro Xeon D servers that are fairly anemic by today's standards in compute power. All three servers are eight core servers and again Xeon D. And this was the performance before I added the Intel Optane cache tier. As you can see, nothing to be ashamed of with an all NVMe configuration on those older Supermicro servers. I hit 62.8 thousand IOPS, 257 megabytes per second throughput, really good latency across the board. So not anything there that really is con too concerning. However, as I flip over to the Intel Optane results, you're going to see a tremendous difference in even the numbers that we're seeing here. After adding Intel Optane, what did the performance charts look like? With Intel Optane, I got a whopping 96.4 thousand IOPS compared to the 62.8. Again, with Intel Optane 96,000.4 and throughput jumped from 257 megabytes per second to 395 megabytes per second. Latency is extremely good. And one of the things, if you compare this write latency with the 95th percentile of write latency, if I flip over to the before Intel Optane, I have cut that in half. Again, 5.62 milliseconds under full load is really, really good. However, with Intel Optane, this write 95th percentile latency is half of what I saw with the all NVMe configuration. So with this configuration, the only thing I changed again was the Intel Optane cache tier. This is hitting two Samsung Evo 980 Pros for the capacity tier. But again, tremendous difference, 62.8 and 96.4 thousand. So if you're wondering if Intel Optane is worth it for the home lab, especially since we can get this kind of storage so cheaply with the sunset of the Intel Optane storage line at the end of 2025 and seeing these huge price cuts, this is awesome guys for the home lab. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this journey with me introducing Intel Optane storage in my home lab environment and the difference that it made in the performance of my VMware vSync cluster. Due to the notice that the storage technology is going to be end of life at the end of 2025, the price of Intel Optane drives has come down significantly. In fact, on many online resellers, you can find Intel Optane drives for extremely cheap. As we've shown, Intel Optane storage is extremely fast. You will see orders of magnitude performance benefits in your home lab by introducing Intel Optane storage over traditional NAND SSD technology. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more great content coming you guys way. Keep on home labbing, stay safe out there guys, and I will see you guys soon.